Jodie Foster, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Congratulations on Money Monster. And I've got to say, I was enthralled right from the get-go. Oh, now, great. Yeah. Maybe it's because of a little bit of a television background. But okay. having been in a television studio many times mm. and known how easy they are mm. to get into from That's the outside. True. And this is the whole premise of the movie. It's quite an incredible concept. You've got a tabloid TV finance show. Right. And then the burnt viewer who comes in with a gun and a bomb. An amazing concept. Yeah, well, um, the film's backdrop is really the world of the financial world today. Um, then there's the world of high technology. Um, and then there's the world of infotainment, weird of broadcast on-air journalism. Um, and when you mix those three things, it's, uh, it's really dangerous for our culture, I think, um, to have our news uh, in some ways be a, 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 a just like an advertising product. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, and then technology and how that interweaves with all of that. Yeah, and when it comes to using your money in financial investments, it's all about having balls, according to George. Yes, apparently. Apparently, balls are pretty important in the movie. Um, he does say balls quite a few times yes. in the film. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, the financial world right now is uh, its a strange place. It's uh, incredibly mysterious. It's overly complicated. It's engineered uh, by the few who uh, benefit directly from the fact that it's mysterious to everyone else. And the whole world has been burnt. The whole world has been burnt. I mean, 2008 was uh, was a, a, a rough time, certainly for America, and then that extended out into the global world. Um, it's not the first time we've had a bubble and a crash. Mm. Um, from 1929, I mean, you know, on, there have been many bubbles and crashes, and there will be many more, yeah. but the difference is is that um, our technology has never been this advanced. It's yeah. uh, advanced beyond our own, even, even our own understanding. That is a really good segue into what you had to face as a director. Yes. You put the bar up so high. You've got a film set inside a TV set or a TV set inside a film yeah, set. Yeah, yes. You, you're shooting it as live, so over yeah. you know one time frame, including a Main Street moving siege, not a, right. not a stationary siege. Right. Degree of difficulty 10. Yeah, that, that wasn't even the hard part. I mean, the hard part is that you have one event um, that is happening simultaneously, that, that happens to, you know, to everyone, and um, that includes the control room that has 40 different monitors, that in includes the police officers that also have monitors, there's people in Korea, in Iceland, in uh, South <laughs> Africa, and everybody's watching this one time, and we make movies over the course of 40, 45 days. Yeah. Um, so in order to recreate that and to time all of that was to some kind of intense jigsaw puzzle. Oh yeah, yeah it's like chess in 3D, <laughs> like just extraordinary. It is. Uh, not to mention switching between broadcast vision and film. Yes. And that too was a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. The, the, the character that George plays, um, it's interesting. And I think viewers will find and movie watchers will find they'll hate him, they'll loathe him, right. they'll love him and maybe even respect him in the morning at the end of the film. Yeah, George's character of Lee Gates um, is the character that changes the most in the movie and he's, um, he's our money monster. You know, he's, uh, He wakes up in the morning and he's completely egotistical. He doesn't care about anyone. Uh, he has absolutely no responsibility as a journalist whatsoever. He drinks a bunch of martinis before he comes to work and doesn't even remember what he says. <laughs> um, and yet... Um, you know, he and, and he's confused as to why he keeps losing everyone. Yeah. Um, he is a, is a coward during the show. He he doesn't he isn't the hero that we we're hoping that he would be. But little by little, he because of this becoming face to face with this hostage taker, he has to really own his own frailties. And um, he's got to find the balls. Yeah, he's got to <laughs> find it. He's got to find the balls. <laughs> and uh, he does change over time. And interestingly, I think you know that's why George is so great in the movie because people really love George. And no matter how heinous he is in the beginning of the film, and no matter how difficult and, and unconscious he is, um, I think that he's always redeemable. Julia Roberts playing the live television producer uh, could have been any of the live television producers that I have worked with, uh, with you know, nerves of steel. Right. Incredible. That's right, yeah. She's, she's um, incredibly calm and powerful. She's as Jiminy Cricket. She is in his ear at all times and manages to produce his survival better than the police do. Um, was, it, was it ever under consideration that maybe you played the role? Not really, not really. Not I think really, once, so it was. Once you put, not really, but you know, once you say the words Julia Roberts, then I would never want to play the part. You know, I'd be so happy to have her. And uh, she does have that really interesting chemistry with George Clooney that's just indescribable. Mm. I mean, they're barely on screen together. And they really are on screen virtually together. So with the, you know, her earpiece, him uh, looking down the barrel mm. of the monitor, 
and you feel like they're just inside each other's heads. Oh, it's without incredible. doubt, without doubt. So now, uh, when a script comes before you, a really good screenplay, yes. what do you, what hat do you wear? Do you wear the director's hat or the actor's hat or the one that has twin colours? <laughs> I do the twin colours, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love to tell stories and I love to make movies. That's all I've ever wanted to do. And um, whatever part I play in that um, is the part I play. Now I am a little bit more fo focused on directing, um, but I've always acted. I've acted for 50 years. I can't imagine that I'm just going to stop acting ever. I'll never stop acting. Well, listen, there was a famous book written in Australia by um, a really good author, and it was called Stalked. And okay. it would make a fantastic movie. Okay. By, and it just so happened to be written by me, but oh, okay. maybe maybe I could drop it off uh, while you're in Australia, and who knows where it could lead you. Sounds good, yeah. yeah. Any yeah. opportunity for you know squeaking that script in there. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so what's left as far as you accomplishing so much? Um, you know, when you think oh, about it, 40 films, 25 years directing, mm -hmm. the TV series have been successful as well. Is there anything unaccomplished? Um, yeah, lots of things. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't, uh, I, I'm, I always feel like a bit of a failure, interestingly. Um, and maybe that's just my psychology. It's something that I'm trying to work out, trying to work on. Um, I'm a really young director. I've barely directed any movies. Um, I started directing when I was 27. I've only directed four films. So that's not a lot. And, and that's the area that I really want to focus on now. And I'm excited about, you know, new stories, getting better, learning, learning yeah, a lot. Yeah. My listeners are great movie addicts and they on behalf of them thank you so much for what you've you. given to the industry and all those hours of wonderful entertainment oh. thank you for your time thank you <laughs> anyone who can get out get out right now do not look up do not make eye contact just go. Lee, stay calm. I'm right here. We are live in five minutes. You have the revisions for the opening. We're still making some changes. Am I going to get the changes before the show or you after know the, the show? You just point the camera my direction. We'll figure it out together. It always sounds so simple and yet so moronic. Here he is, the Wizard of Wall Street himself. The name is Lee Gates. The show is Money Monster. Without risk, there is no reward. Should I sell? Should I unload? Get some balls! Man up! Who's that guy on camera, too? You want to complain about it? Go ahead. Who is it? Anybody know? Was this a union thing? Cut the feed. Whoever's in there, turn the cameras on! Turn the cameras on, Patty! Turn it on, What am I going to do? Turn them on! Uh, put it up. Take it out. Put it on. How do I know it won't blow up? Because I have the detonator. My thumb comes off this trigger, then we all explode. I might be the one with the gun here, but I'm not the real criminal. It's people like these guys. I got my finger on the trigger. I'm telling you, it's rigged. The whole damn thing. But I don't know the truth. They're stealing everything from us, and they're getting away with it, too. How's that you. even fair? Just keep talking to him. All right, you're good at that. I got my finger on the trigger. You lost a lot of money when the market tanked. They tracked down his girlfriend. That was everything we had. Every last cent. What are you doing? I'm just trying to survive. I'll get you some answers. Nobody was asking any questions before. These guys could expose everything. We both want an explanation for what went wrong. We don't know. You have to understand how delicate of a situation this I'm is. I'm sitting 80 feet from a bomb. Don't talk to me about delicate situations. We're human beings. We're not computers. We have a conscience. I'm trying to save him. You're trying to shoot him. I want an explanation! Follow the money, find the fraud. We're in this together now. Don't turn your back on anybody. I don't want you to die. Oh my god. No! You came here to get some answers. You deserve to get some answers.